Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we get ready to go into the Word, I pray the Holy Ghost would mantle me in a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost from heaven tonight. Anoint me afresh to teach and preach the Word of God in the power of the Holy Ghost with revelation knowledge and with authority tonight. Let revelation truth be imparted into the hearts and minds of your people. Enlighten your people tonight. Let this message lift them high tonight in the Holy Ghost. Help this message to cause them to mature and go deeper in God tonight. Let them walk away in the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them walk away with the victory tonight. Give them a breakthrough as the word of God is teach and preach tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God on tonight. How are you wonderful saints doing on tonight? It is so good for us to be with you. That's coming from me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy Pinder. Now, on tonight, I'm, I'm dealing with a very serious teaching on tonight, and I really want you to pay attention attention to the word of God on tonight. And I believe as we get into the word of God, I believe as the Holy Ghost gives some of you revelation knowledge from the word of God on tonight, I believe some of you will be healed, delivered, and set free just because of the knowledge of the word of God that will come into your spirit on tonight. David said, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Can someone open your mouth and make that that declaration on tonight, Satan is defeated. Can someone just open your mouth and say it right now? Satan is defeated. Praise God. My God, my God, my God. Satan is defeated. He is defeated. Do you believe it tonight? Come on, just declare it. Just open your mouth and say it. Satan is is defeated. Thanks, Kales. Now, let me say this. We're about to get into the Word of God, and I really want your full, undivided attention tonight, because what I'm going to teach you on tonight, it may be the difference between death and life for, for some of you. It may be the difference between spending your full time on this earth to accomplish God's purpose or allowing the enemy to get the upper hand on you and take you out of here before your time. Someone just make a bold declaration and say, I shall live and not die to declare the works of God. Come on, open your mouth and say it. That's what David said. David said, I shall live and not die to declare the works of God. I ain't going nowhere until I have shown God's power to my generation. That's what David said. The apostle Paul even, the apostle Paul even said it. He says, for the time of my departure is at hand. He said, now it's time for me to go out of here. I didn't whoop the devil and made a fool out of him in the name of Jesus, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now God can check me out of here. Now I want to take my time because I want to do a lot of teaching tonight. And this is what I want to say. As a, as a preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ and someone who studies the Bible, I've been preaching the gospel for, for over 20-something years, since 1993. That means, oh Lord have mercy, that's what, 27 years? 27 years I've been preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've come to realize... I've come to realize a lot of people are living in defeat because they have not yet come to the realization, the full realization of what Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection has accomplished, have accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Jesus did not die on Calvary cross for the devil to whip you day in and day out. The devil is alive. And I'm so sick of people exalting generational curses above.
above the cross of Calvary, above the name of Jesus, above the blood of Jesus. I'm just sick and tired of Christians talking about generational curses. I believe that stuff is real, but you have to understand why Jesus died on Calvary cross on tonight. Now I got to take my time with this. I got we got a long ways to go. We got a lot of grounds to cover. And if there's one message I would encourage you to go and listen to over and over again, it would be this message from tonight. Now let's go into the book of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verses 14, all the way down to verse 22. Glory to God. Luke chapter 11, verses 14, all the way down to verse 22. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The Bible says, and Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass. Now, you that need a miracle of healing in your body, you may be blind, you may be deaf, you may be paralyzed, you may have prostate cancer, you may have some type of sickness in your body. I want you to listen to what I'm reading to you tonight. The Bible says, and he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass. Watch this now. <clears throat> Excuse me. It came to pass when the devil was gone out. Not before, after, it came to pass, after the devil was gone out, after the devil was cast out, the dumb spoke and the people wondered. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? It said, it came to pass, Jesus was, was, was preaching a meeting. He was preaching the gospel. And while as he was preaching, they brought a man to Jesus who was absolutely dumb. No sound could come from out of his mouth. He was totally dumb. And Jesus, through the gifts of the Holy Ghost, discerned that this man could not speak, had nothing to do with natural causes. It was the work of the devil himself. And the Bible clearly says, after Jesus cast the dumb spirit out, out of the man, his tongue was loose, and he began to speak, and the people were amazed. Are you following? Are you following the progression of how miracles take place? And you heard me share this story, and this is I share this over and over again because this is one of those moments in my walk with God where the Holy Ghost made a mark on my life. He impacted me. I was preaching a miracle service. In Uganda, Africa, it was during the pastor's conference. It was the day session. I was preaching the gospel and there was a mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost came on, on me as I preached for miracles. And the Holy Ghost spoke very clear in my spirit. Under that anointing, you can hear God so clearly. Amen. The Holy Ghost said, I want you to command every deaf and dumb spirit to come from out of the people right now. And I just obey God. I begin to command every deaf and dumb spirit to come come from out of the people and deaf ears begin to pop open all over that place. Are you listening to me tonight? I said those who were deaf, their ears begin to pop open. People's eyes were bugging out. They begin to weep and cry because the power of the Holy Ghost begin to fall in that meeting. I said many deaf people, they begin to hear under that anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. All of a sudden I saw a young woman who had on an orange outfit. She fell to the ground under that anointing and she rolled back and forth for about 20 minutes. Are you listening to me? And when they picked her up off the ground, she began to make some signs to her mom and to, to some of the interpreters that were working with me. And I saw the interpreters, their faces begin to lit up. They, their faces lit up with excitement. I went up to the platform and I said, come on, tell me what's going on. There was a lot of miracle testimonies coming up. A man who was paralyzed on the right side who had suffered from a stroke. He was was completely healed and he could walk up and down on the platform completely healed by the power of God and then they brought up the young woman who had on the orange outfit who was on the ground rolling back and forth 
the interpreter looked at me and he said, Pastor, there is a big miracle here. I said, tell it to me, brother, tell it to me. He said, Pastor Sean, this young woman was born dumb. She was born deaf and dumb for 18 years. She couldn't hear and she could not make a sound. Are you listening to me? They, she, they said she can now hear and her tongue is loose. Somebody shout. Satan is defeated. Shout it with me. Satan. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. God use her tongue. God loose her tongue. After the devil was cast out, she began to speak. Another place in the Bible, they brought a man to Jesus who was totally blind. And the Bible says, Jesus cast out the blind spirit out of the man. And after the blind spirit, after the blind spirit came out, the man who was blind, he could see. There were many services in Africa that I was preaching my God and after we cast out the spirit of blindness their blind eyes begin to see somebody shout Satan is defeated somebody help me give God a praise here tonight hallelujah I feel the Holy Ghost give him praise just give him praise we bring in glory to the name of Jesus. The apostle Paul said, it's not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Somebody shout, Satan, is defeated glory to God hallelujah my God my God now watch this so a miracle took place and just like now <laughs> this is how it was then but some of them said there's always that some who have more faith in the devil's power than the power of God. Some of them said, oh, he is casting out devils by Beelzebub. He is using Satan's power to cast out devils. Isn't that sad that the minute God work a miracle in somebody's ministry, people want to say, oh, they must be doing something funny. Why you got to be doing something funny to have a miracle? Do you believe there is power in the name of Jesus? Power to open the eyes of the blind. Power to unstop the ears of the deaf. Power to, my God, power to make the cripples get up and walk. Power to heal cancer. Shout power. Power, power, power. Power. Glory to God. Shout power. My God, my God, my God. Now watch this. So some of them said, he casted out devils by Beelzebub, the chief of, the chief of demons, the chief of devils, and others tempting him sought from him a sign. What more sign do you want, man? Someone who is dumb is speaking. What more sign do you want? Lord, have mercy. That's some serious unbelief. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against itself fall. Now let me jump to where I need to go tonight. He said in verse 20, But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come up on you. Now watch here. i got to take my time with this because I want you to get where we're headed tonight. Then Jesus begins to give them a uh, prophecy that was being fulfilled while he walked the earth and that will really be fulfilled through his death burial and resurrection Jesus said unto them watch this now I need you to pay attention Jesus said when a strong man armed 
keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Now, Jesus is talking about Satan. Jesus is calling Satan a strong man. Watch this. Jesus said, when a strong man armed, that means he has on full armor. He's fully equipped. When a strong man armed, keepeth his palace. The word keepeth there means he's guarding and he's watching his palace. Watch this. When a strong man armed, keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Can someone repeat those words? His goods are in peace. Repeat those words for me. His goods are at peace. Now watch this. So Jesus is saying, Satan is a strong man. He is watching over his palace. And Jesus actually makes a statement that Boggled my mind when the Holy Ghost began to open this thing up to me over the years. Jesus said, his goods are at peace. Now, I didn't know the devil had anything good. Can I talk to somebody here tonight? <laughs> I said, can I talk to somebody here tonight? So, so Jesus said, Satan actually had goods when Jesus came. Jesus is talking about Satan. He said, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are at peace. And the word peace right there means a state of tranquility, exemption from the rage and havoc of war, peace between individuals. Jesus is actually saying, until he came on the scene, Satan has a whole lot of goods, had a whole lot of goods, and his goods are at peace. That means Satan was unchallenged. Are you hearing me? He was unchallenged. Glory to God. I'm going to have me some church tonight if I got to have it all by myself. I wonder where he got the goods from. I'll tell you where he got the goods from. He stole the goods from Adam. Just hold on. He stole the goods from Adam and Eve because when Adam and Eve, I feel the Holy Ghost about to fall here tonight like a bomb. Glory to God. Help me to contain myself, God. Lord, have mercy here, Jesus. Where did Satan get the goods from? He got the goods from Adam and Eve when he deceived Adam and Eve to sin against God. The authority and the power that God had invested in Adam was handed over to old Slufer. It was handed to the lion devil. It was handed over to that snake, the accuser of the brethren. He got his his goods from Adam and Eve. But Jesus, my, let, me, my, let, me, let me slow down. I'm getting ahead of myself. God, help me tonight. Lord, help me tonight because I want to help you understand something. I can't let you miss this. Oh, trust me, I'm going to preach myself happy tonight. Listen here. The word, the word goods right there, when I explain to you what the word goods right there mean, some of you are going to get fiery hot mad. Some of you are about to get aggressive tonight like you hadn't gotten aggressive in the Holy Ghost for a long time. Are you ready to get mad at the devil tonight? Well, let me explain to you what that word goods mean. That word goods right there, it actually means... The word goods right there actually means possessions, it means wealth, and it means property. My God, someone help me get mad tonight. It means, it means possessions, it means wealth, and it means property. Jesus said it in John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, he said the thief, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. Where did he get the goods from? It's the souls of your sons and daughters. It's the wealth that God has stored up for you that he robbed you out of. It's your health. My God, is someone listening to me? Have you lost a house? Have you lost a car to repossession? Have you lost a job? Are you listening to me? My God, we getting ready to go into the enemy's camp and we gonna take back all the goods 
all the stuff that the devil have robbed us out. I don't know about you, but I'm armed and dangerous tonight. I'm not going to turn back until I get everything that the devil stole from me. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But I have come that you can have life and have it more abundantly. My God, David said, he restores my soul. He anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. The Bible said in the book of Joel, I will restore unto you the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm have stolen from you. I'm ready to go in and help somebody get their marriage back. I'm ready to help you get the souls of your sons back, your daughters back. Someone shout, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that love us and gave himself for us. No weapon formed against me. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Now watch this. So Jesus said, the goods that this fella got, it is all stolen goods. I don't want to hang with a thief. Can someone say, I ain't hanging with no thief. Come on, talk back to me here. I ain't hanging with no thief. Jesus said, this man is a thief. He stole the stuff. He stole it from the church. He stole it from the church. My God, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. I said he stole it from the church. Some of you tonight struggling with, with, a, with debt over your head. You are burning down with debt. Every time you try to get ahead, you're getting knocked back 10 steps. Somebody is going to get set free tonight. You can get the victory before this message come to a close. I say you about to get the victory tonight. God's about to give someone a breakthrough. Now, now watch this. Now watch this because I, I really got to get you to see this now. So I want you to understand this. Jesus has to confront a devil. Watch this now. Jesus is confronting Satan who is fully armored. He has on his full armor because he hadn't been defeated yet. He has on his full armor. The power that he deceptively stole from Adam and Eve he still has that. He still has the power to this point here when Jesus is prophesying this stuff. Satan still had the power up to this point here that Jesus was talking about. He was unchallenged. He still was ruling and reigning over this earth. But Jesus said, right, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish this prophecy here. Jesus said in verse 22, glory to God. Come on, said Pastor Sean, give me the good stuff. Hurry, get to the good stuff. Get to the good stuff, Pastor. I can't wait, my God. Come on, say, say, Pastor, hurry, get me to the good stuff. I, I got to get my stuff back. My God, my God, let me get to verse 22 here. So Jesus began to give them the rest of this prophecy. Jesus said, but when a stronger than he. <laughs> now he bringing himself into the prophecy. Jesus said, but when a stronger, <laughs> when 
are stronger than he. Watch this. Hold on one second. Don't make me shout so fast, sis. That's my girl. She ready to have church. My son on the drums, they're, they're ready to rock and roll, man. They, these folk are ready to have them some church. It's good to have some Holy Ghost filled kids, I'll tell you that. Now watch this. So Jesus said, now let me read verse 21 again so you can really get this. Jesus said, when a strong man armed, he's fully equipped. He's still got all of his armor. He, when he keeps his palace, his goods are at peace, which means he is unchallenged. So he's walking around like my Lord Big Dog. He is guarding the souls of men. He is guarding your wealth. He is guarding your possessions. He is guarding the marriage that he stole from you. Are you listening to me? He got somebody bound on alcohol. He got someone in your family bound on drugs. And he's standing here unchallenged. But Jesus, and let me give you the rest of this prophecy. But when a strong I feel the Holy Ghost, but we are stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him. He taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted, and then he can plunder his house and divide the spoils. Hold on, Kales. My God, my God. I'm about to preach myself into a fit. You understand what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, I'm the stronger man. And now that the stronger man is here, the devil have met his might. I can whip him. I can plunder him. I can strip him of his armor and leave him naked. I come to strip him. I come to whip him. I come to put the devil up under my feet. And I come to help you restore back everything that the devil stole from you. I come to get it back. I'm the king of all kings. I'm the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am the God that is more than enough. And that's why this man who was dumb, he can now speak because I'm binding the strong man. I'm taking everything that he has stolen. I'm giving this man his health back. I'm giving this man his speech back. I'm giving blind by the mess his sight back. I'm giving the man in Mark chapter 2. I'm breaking paralysis. I'm causing him to be able to get up and walk again. This person who have cancer, I'm going to heal him tonight. So yes! This person who have diabetes, I'm going to heal him. This one who have heart disease, I'm going to whip the devil. I'm going to take the health of God's people that he stole. And I'm going to dish it up. I'm going to divide the spoils. Say, Lord, when you divide the spoils, don't pass me by. Don't forget about me. I believe God for a miracle. I believe God for a breakthrough. I believe God that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Someone shout yes. Someone shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. My God. Hold on, let me just teach for about five more minutes here. Glory to God, I can barely contain myself tonight. Now watch here. Now you got to understand this. You got to understand this here tonight. I want you to hear me real good. So this devil, watch this now. This devil that Jesus, the son of God, is beginning to confront and beginning to engage. It was still before his death, burial, and resurrection. This is a devil Jesus is confronting that still has his full armor, that still has all of this power that he had up to this time here. Jesus is beginning to engage him. 
Jesus is beginning to defeat him. Jesus is beginning to strip him. Jesus is beginning to make a fool out of him and to prove that the devil was weakening. He called 12 disciples. Help me preach myself happy here. He called 12 disciples in Luke chapter 9 in Matthew chapter 10 and the Bible says he gave them power over all the power of the enemy he gave them power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and he told his apostles and nothing shall by any means hurt you I'm ordaining you and I'm sending you out to cast the devils out and to heal the sick and the Bible says the twelve went out from among Jesus and they begin to heal the sick they begin to open the eyes of the blind they begin to unstop the ears of the deaf they begin to make the cripples get up and walk then my God he anointed another 70 and he gave them power to cast out devils and to heal the sick and the Bible says the 70 they returned with joy and they said Lord even the devils are subject unto us in your name even the devils even the devils they got to bow to the name of Jesus shout yes someone shout yes my God my God Let me help you understand what's happening here. I know this is a big pill for you to swallow tonight. That's why I'm encouraging you to go back over this message over and over and over and over until you get it down in your spirit. Now I got to help you understand something. This devil that Jesus confronted here in the the book of Luke 11 and this devil that his apostles confronted in Luke 9 and the other 70 in Luke chapter 10 and Matthew 10 that's 82 disciples they whooped the devil silly my God you got to understand Satan still had on all of his armor are you hearing me he still had on all of his armor but Jesus prophesied this in verse in verse 22 of Luke 11 Jesus said but when a stronger than he shall come on him and overcome him he take it from him all his armor wherein he trusteth and then he said he began to divide his spoils so this devil here in Luke 11 and in Luke 9 and in Luke and in Matthew 10 that the disciples had to confront this was a devil who still had all of his armor but when Jesus help me preach tonight somebody when they hung him high when they stretch him wide when they put the nails in his feet when they put the nails in his hands when the soldier took the spear and shoved it up through his side and it went into his heart sack and the sack of his heart burst and out came blood and out came water there was thundering and there was lightning and there was darkness for the space of an hour they put Jesus in a borrowed tomb but my Bible says I want to preach tonight my Bible says on the third day on the third day God raised him from the dead and Jesus appeared to his apostles and he declared all power someone shout all power someone shout all power he declared it all power keep it going he declared all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth why did he say it because when Jesus died he went into the regions of hell and the Bible says 
gate had the keys of death. He had the keys of hell. He had the keys of the grave. But Jesus, when he said into your hands, I commit my spirit. When he yelled with a loud voice, it is finished. His spirit left his body and went into the lower regions of the of the of the of, of hell and the bible says he stripped the devil of his keys he stripped the devil of his power he stripped the devil of his authority and when he rose from the dead on the third day he said all power is given to me in heaven and on earth the power that Satan stole from Adam and Eve. I recovered it. I got it back. I got it back. I'm going to put man back in the position that they were in, in the Garden of Eden. I gave them power to rule. I gave them power to read. I gave them power to defeat the devil. Somebody shout, I got more power than the devil. I got more power. I got more power. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My God, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Somebody shout, Satan is defeated. Satan is defeated. I want the church to know. I want the world to know. Satan is defeated. You can be healed tonight. You can be saved tonight. You can be delivered tonight. You can be set free because Jesus, he defeated the devil and he stripped him. He stripped him of his power. He stripped him of his authority. The devil is running around naked. His armor is gone. That's why the Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you because he has no armor. He is no match for the child of God. We are armed and dangerous. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand because you are fighting against a naked devil. You are fighting against a devil that is defeated. You are fighting against a devil that is stripped of his power and authority. Shout Satan is defeated. She come on another bus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to get your health back? Are you ready to get your children back? Are you ready to get your marriage back? Are you ready to get your possessions back? Are you ready to get your family back? The devil can't stop you because he is stripped of his power. And you have the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. And Jesus said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. And absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. And every tongue that rise against you in judgment, it shall be condemned. Ready or not, here I come. I come to get my stuff. You robbed me for the last time. I come to get my stuff. I dare someone to shout, I'm taking it all back. I'm getting it back tonight. I'm getting it back tonight. Because Satan is 
defeated. She come under the babasa. My God. Hallelujah, you've won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing it to him tonight. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death couldn't hold you. Death cannot hold you now. You are the risen. You are the risen king. Seated. Seated in majesty. You are the risen. You are the risen king. I got our God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Our God, our God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah. You won the victory. You have won the victory. Come on and sing it to him on tonight. Hallelujah. You won it all. You have won it all for me. Death couldn't hold you. Death cannot hold you down. Listen. I believe the Holy Ghost is trying to enlighten you. So you got to understand. The devils that the apostles whipped and defeated. When Jesus walked this earth. He was a devil who still was equipped. And still he was fully armored and dressed. But the devil that Peter and Paul those dealt with after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is a devil who have been stripped of that power and that authority. And this is why the Holy Ghost wanted me to teach and preach this message to you tonight. To help you realize that Satan who attacked Job in the book of Job, who attacked Joshua, who attacked Moses, who attacked Christ when he walked this earth. We, me and you are now facing a, a devil who have been defeated and who have been stripped. He doesn't have that power that he had when Jesus confronted him here in Luke chapter 11. Jesus stripped Satan through his death, burial, and resurrection. In fact, let me read it to you. This is what the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 listen to the word of God I want you to see this in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 the Bible says and having watch this now and this is Paul teaching and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it Paul is now reading the past tense. He said, and having spoiled principalities. The word spoiled means to strip someone off their armor. So Paul is teaching that after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, through his death, burial, and resurrection, he stripped Satan of the armor he once had. So you and I, we are, we are dealing with a devil who is already defeated who have been stripped naked and this is why Satan he uses deception he has to deceive you he does not want you to get this kind of truth he does not want you to get this kind of revelation knowledge because he is exposed 
So if he is defeated, how can you, as a child of God, talk, talk about How can you as a child of God, wash in the blood, bought with the precious blood of Jesus, be living under a generational curse? Impossible. You live under a generational curse because you choose to be ignorant of the word of God. There is no generational curse that can hold a real child of God back. Are you listening to me? Satan is defeated he is defeated and that's why Jesus enforced this in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 Jesus said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony you can consistently defeat the enemy every time he attacks you can defeat him and get the victory every single time because the Apostle Paul said it listen to what Paul said he said now thanks be unto God which always cause us to triumph how can we get the victory every single time because satan is defeated he is already defeated and we enforce his defeat by by educating ourselves by studying the word of god and by finding out who we are in christ and we take our stand on the word of god we don't listen to vain babblings and foolish sayings out there that does not line up with scripture we believe the word of God and when you get God saved every curse of your life was automatically broken the only curse that can be on your life is the one you allow to stay there talking about you living under some generational curse when Christ already set you free through his death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ are you listening to me on tonight I'm trying to help some of you on tonight some of you are saying oh pray for me listen and I totally understand people need prayer but it's not all about prayer sometimes you need the wisdom of God you are praying about things that you have authority over you are praying about stuff that God has given you the power and you the authority to take a stand and make a declaration and break these things with the power that he have invested in you as a child of God and this is our job our job is to teach you our job is to equip you our job is to challenge you to let go of, 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 of foolish sayings and traditions that were just sounds good and handed down to you but it's not biblically sound it's not based on scripture and the more you come into revelation knowledge the more victory you walk in your prayer life begins to change because you realize when you go into prayer you are not going into prayer from a place of defeat you are going into prayer from a place of victory you are an enforcer in the kingdom of God you are a child of God you are more than a conqueror greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world you are blood washed your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life and there is no generational curse that can rest over you and your family are you listening to me sing it tonight hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory come on and sing it to him Hallelujah You have won it all for me Death cannot hold you down You are the risen You are the risen King Seated You're seated in magic Steve. Listen, you got to work the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. Work it. You learn from listening to ministries like, like our ministry and other ministries that God have anointed to teach you and equip you. Just make sure you're getting sound biblical teaching that empowers you. You don't want to keep listening to preaching that makes you feel like a loser. You're not a loser. You're more than a conqueror. You are the apple of His eyes. You're wonderfully and beautifully made. You were created in his image and in his likeness. God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for your life. 
my God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you tonight. Come on, just lift your hands to heaven. I feel a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost coming on you tonight. David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Then my eyes will see my desire on my enemies and my heirs will hear of it. He's placing a fresh anointing on you tonight. Just lift your hands to heaven on tonight. Halle, 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 hallelujah. I hear this. Give him glory. <clears throat> Give him glory. Give him glory. Sing it with me. Give him glory. Give him glory. God's gonna get it. God's gonna get the glory out of this. Come on, worship with me for a few minutes here. So just give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him. God's gonna get it. See it. God's gonna get the glory out of this. Come on, sing it to him on tonight. Just give him, give him glory, give him, give him, give him, give him glory. God's gonna get it. God's gonna get the glory out of this. Come on, sing it to him on tonight. So just give him glory. Give him. Give him glory. Give him. Come on and give him glory. Give him. God's gonna get it. God's gonna get the glory out of this. I surrender all. Listen on tonight. If you're tuning into this broadcast and you've not yet surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what this is all about on tonight. This is about the salvation of souls. Jesus love you. He said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus loved you so much he was willing to lay down his life and die for you. It's time to surrender. It's time to make things right with God. I want you to repeat after me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner on tonight. And I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. I'm asking you to wash me in your blood on tonight. Save my soul. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross that my sins might be forgiven. I believe they took your body and buried it in a borrowed tomb. And I also believe that on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you're coming again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving me of all of my sins, washing me in your blood, and writing my name down in the Lamb's book of life. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and meant it with all of your heart, let me and my lovely, beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, be the first to say to you, welcome into the kingdom of God. Welcome into the family of God. He loves you and he has an awesome plan for your life. And right now, if you've just surrendered your life to Jesus, if this is your first time, I want you to type in the live chat right now, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Type in the live chat right now. G type it, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me and of my words down here on this earth, I'll be ashamed of you when you stand before my Father and the holy angels. Welcome into the kingdom of God, Karen. We want to give a shout out to you. And all to thee, my Bless, Angela, God bless you. And I, Suzanne, God bless you. God bless you. Jai, God bless you. Debbie, God bless you. I see those surrenders on tonight. I see those surrenders on tonight. A 
Rwanda, God bless you. I see that. Jamo, God bless you. Andre, God bless you. God bless you, Paula. God bless you. God bless you, Sandra. Busari, God bless you. Winston, God bless you. God bless you. Sevesh, God bless you. Wuslanda, God bless you. Ruth, God bless you. And I, Mama, welcome into the kingdom tonight. People are surrendering and coming into the kingdom. And all, Patricia, welcome into the family of God on tonight. Hope, welcome into God's family on tonight. Singing, I surrender all. I surrender. And I surrender all. Come on, welcome these people into the kingdom on tonight. And I surrender. God bless you, Candace. All to thee. And all to thee, my blessed Savior. Carnese, God bless you. Maria, God bless you. Mustafa, God bless you. I give myself. I give myself away. Come on, sing it to him on tonight. Karen, God bless you. I give myself so you can use me. Veronica, God bless you. Misha, God bless you. I give myself away. Monique, God bless you. Give myself. I give myself away. Come on, sing it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on tonight. I give myself. God bless you, Paula. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Sing it to him. Withholding nothing. Withholding. Withholding nothing. Rosalind, God bless you. I surrender all. And I surrender all to you. Everything. Everything. I give to you. Withholding. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding, withholding nothing. God bless you, Doreen. We say yes, sing it to him. And we say yes. Sing it with me on tonight, church. Yes. Tell the Lord yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Tell him yes tonight. And we say yes. Come on and tell the Lord yes. Yes. Tell the Lord yes. Yes. We say yes. And we say yes. Listen. Claudine, God bless you. Welcome tonight. We cover all of you in the blood of Jesus who have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus on tonight. We pray that God would touch you. We pray that God would keep you. We pray that God would strengthen you and open your understanding to the Word of God. We pray that God would teach you how to pray as you stick around this ministry and other ministries who love God and love people with all of their hearts. We pray that you would, we pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost would come into your life. We pray that God would fill you with the Holy Ghost to overflowing and establish you and plant you in the kingdom of God. We commit you into God's hands right now in the name of Jesus.